I guess we'll get started on time. Um, we probably won't go the full hour, maybe. I don't know, if you guys have questions, we do. Um, I'm 2TD, I used to go by Two Tone Disco in a group with another person. Um, I played, the last time I was at MagFest was like six, six years ago? Yeah, six years ago. Um, I played the main stage too, which was, it was cool to come back. And there was still, there's still people here that was like, holy crap, you're still here. Not in a bad way, but you know, because I, I dipped out for a bit. Uh, I run, well, I'm part of a group that runs uh, virtual events in VR chat. Uh, we, run, we run a thing called Shelter. Uh, I started Shelter because I lost my manager, lost my agent, pretty much everything during the pandemic. Uh, I was supposed to go on tour with a bigger artist known as uh, Ducky um, at the time. Uh, I had like, I think 16, 17 tour dates, was about to get an agent, was about to do the whole EDM career thing. Um, I've been doing this 16 years, and it's it's like a roller coaster. I've always been like really independent. Most of my music self-released because uh, submitting music to labels sucks. Um, most of them because they just won't read your stuff. It's kind of more based on social media numbers this day, these days. We'll get into that. Um, but yeah, I've been doing this a long time, and I found VR, and it kind of it kind of saved me. It kind of saved me from a very dark place where I didn't feel creative, I didn't feel like I had an outlet anymore, because uh, it felt like I just lost everything. But VRChat's great. It's a great, great, great place, and it's full of great, great people. Um, so this panel, we're gonna kinda go through um, things that I've done, uh, that, and this is just a rough guide. This is stuff I've learned from 16 years of doing things, you don't have to follow this to the T. Also, apologies for this PowerPoint being kind of, kind of the fonts are all over the place, uh, and it's just white with some images. Um, I had like two days to prep for this because I I got an email saying like this panel wasn't happening, and then two days prior, uh, Tupper messaged me and was like, "Hey, your panel's on the schedule." I was like, "Oh no!" <laughs> so it was originally going to have more people, but I was like, "Screw it! I'll just do it myself." Um, so we're gonna kind of run through like how I kind of branded Shelter with my team, like how to kind of how to kind of get to a point with your music, because like I know a lot of people that make really really good music, they're really good artists, but they don't know how to get themselves out there. They don't know how to brand themselves. They don't know how to like push themselves. And for some reason, that's something that I've over the long period of time I've gotten pretty dialed in. Uh, and it's, it's not as hard as you think. Um, so, I mean, you gotta think about what you wanna do. Uh, especially in VR, right? You can be a singer-songwriter, you can do like solo guitar, piano. Uh, there's an artist called Naku in there that does like amazing piano performances. Uh, there's open mics where people like play, I've heard some like insane guitar players in VR. Um, DJ producers, there's acting, there's stand-up comedy, and it's actually good. You'd be surprised how like much that translates in VR. I know it, like on paper it wouldn't seem like it would, but it, it does. Uh, there's visual performances, like people who make like visual performance worlds, and people who do like live. I've seen people put visual performances on their avatar, and they'll just go to public worlds and be like, show my avatar. And then they have like an entire show on their avatar. It's crazy. Um, there's people filming movies or shorts in there. And then there's obviously world building and creation. So a lot of what you gotta do before you kinda set out on like, oh, I wanna do something, right? You gotta kinda figure out what you wanna do. These are just a few things that I've personally seen in VR that you can do. Uh, and it's insane, it's so cool, and you can have an audience. Um, Cause one of the hardest things when you're first starting out, like doing anything, is you get better by performing. And performing, at least in my experience as a DJ and producer, is it's really hard. It's really hard to get shows. Like, I've gotten to the point where I've had like 60, 70,000 monthly plays on Spotify. I've like, I can bring people to shows, but I won't get bookings because I don't have an agent or I don't, you know, you don't do illicit substances with some promoter and they don't want to let you in. You know, it's just, it can be a little bit of a, you got to know someone. So that's the beauty of VR, is like, hey, you can do whatever you want and you can kind of build your own audience in there. So yeah, one of the big things is like, what do you want to do, right? 
Um, these are just a few things. In this, we're gonna focus more on like DJ and uh, like creating a nightclub in VR, I guess, or a venue, performance venue, uh, because that's what I have experience with, but this could be applied to anything. Um, a big thing is like stuff costs money. It's, it sucks. Um, you can do a lot of things yourself. Um, it will cost you time, but like just having basic equipment, like getting a VR headset, getting a PC, that, that in itself costs money, right? So it's kind of put a budget together. Like think, is this a hobby? Do you want to do this full time? Like how much are you willing to invest in this? I'll be frank, I've spent close to $40,000 on shelter alone last year, just putting stuff together, right? But we make money, but I definitely spend more money than we make. Uh, I kind of just don't look at it. It's okay, money's temporary. It's just, a, it's just a fuel that lets you live your life and lets you accomplish what you want to accomplish. You can't take money with you when you die, don't hoard it. Uh, don't become a billionaire, that, that's a bad idea. Um, if you do, try and just give it to other people and give back or do something cool with it. Um, and this can change over time. You could be like, set out, I wanna be a DJ full time, I'm gonna put this budget together, make this insane studio, and you could be like, I don't feel this anymore, and that's okay too. Um, but a big thing before you set out is like, maybe have a rough budget in, in, in mind, like look at how much a VR headset costs, look at how much a controller costs, um, DJ equipment's not cheap. Uh, I have a set of CDJ 3000s at home, like three of them and a 900 Nexus. I look over and I'm like, that is a small Honda sitting, living, sitting in my studio, AKA my living room. And it's, it, it's gross, you don't need to do that. You don't need to do that. I've, I've been doing this 16 years and all I do is just trade up. That's a good thing to do. Um, start small. Uh, or start as small as you can. Like, I think the best entry, if you're gonna be se super serious, the best entry controller is a DDJ-1000 right now, in my opinion. It's the most fairly priced controller. Um, if you're a beginner and you don't know if you're gonna like it, uh, it used to be the DDJ-400, but I think they replaced it recently with like a DJ-XZ or something. Just look up like DDJ-400 replacement and you'll find it. Um, but yeah, it's just like, how serious do you want to get? This, and this is something you should do. You should put together a budget and be like, how much am I willing to spend on myself? And do it within reason, but like, don't feel bad. An investment in yourself and your own happiness is one of the best things you could do in life. It's much better than stocks or any of those other things. Stocks and things are good, like plan for your future, don't be reckless, but investing in your own happiness and things that you enjoy will make your life better and you won't regret it. Um, another thing, after you kind of put a budget together and you get your, you kind of start moving down the path, especially in VR, it's like, what, what, how am I gonna perform in VR, right? So you can do a public performance. Like I said, people put stuff on their, performances on their avatars and just literally go to public lobbies. Um, in VR chat, I'm sure most people in here, if you're here, you've probably used it. Um, you can go to public lobbies and be like, hey, you wanna see something cool? Like, I mean, they might think you're gonna like meme them to death with an avatar, but, and that's an art too, but uh, yeah, it's just kind of like, you can do public performances. A lot of times accompanied with like a Twitch stream or being like, hey, is it okay if I can record? One thing I suggest if you're recording in VR, if you buy VR Chat Plus, which you should do, um, you can put a little, uh, <laughs> you can put a little icon that like, in your name that says, hey, I'm recording. Just so people know, because it's respectful. You should be respectful. Because even though you're on the internet and behind a, behind a VR headset, you should treat with people with respect. Um, I know it can be easy to not when you're behind a computer, but it's a good thing to do. Um, but yeah, you could do public performances. You could use someone else's world. I think Iron Biscuit has made like 45 pop-up maps at this point. You do not need to build your own. There are so many club music worlds that you can use. And like I said, this is more, more towards music, but there's, there's public theater worlds, there's a stand-up, there, I think there's a stand-up world, there's an open mic world. There's so many worlds that you can just use, and those are free. The creators are just like, go for it. So using someone else's world, totally cool. Cur full cur curation, I can't speak. Full curation is like building your own world. 
Um, this involves a lot more. Uh, you can do it yourself. Uh, I'll be honest, I don't do world building. I do more like art direction for, for shelter and for our worlds. So I kind of just sit with Kai and we come up with concepts and I'm like, Kai's constantly like, that's not possible. And then, and then like a week later, it's like, hey, I did it. And that's kind of how it works. But it's the most involved and you have the most control, but it's also the most work. Um, you can commission people to make you worlds. Another person, Iron Biscuit, will do that for you. So that's something in your budget. Like if you want to build your own world, put it in your budget. Um, building your own world's really cool. And the nice thing about it is you can kind of curate it the way you want to curate it. And you can start, you can kind of make it more of an experience. Um, but these are just some ways to start. For most people, I say just start using someone else's world and see if you like running events. They're a lot of work. They're not fun all the time. Um, but it's a good way to start. And then kind of start making your own world. Uh, how we made shelter, uh, I met Kai in a public lobby at a public Japan shrine. And he told me pepperonis aren't real and told me, uh, I'm gonna start a cult and you're gonna join it. And I guess, yeah, both of those things are true. So, but yeah, I met him in a public world and I, I started shelter as a commission. He, he was like, he didn't have an index and I was like, look, I'll, I'll buy you an index if you make me a world just to practice in. Like the whole reason I started shelter, I just wanted a world to practice in by myself. And I was like, if people show up, cool. Uh, and then before I knew it, we were doing like, a bunch of shows and then I was like, hey, this seems like people like it, let's keep doing it. And we just kept doing shows. Um, also Kai was in a not so great living situation so we started a Patreon and kind of got him out of that cr crappy living situation. But the only reason we monetized was to help him. Like the whole goal was not to make something big and crazy where Virtual Riot must die and all these crazy people have played it. I don't know how it happened. Um, I'll get into that too, but yeah, it's, it, it's pretty nuts. Um, another big thing is visual branding and imagery. If you see like, so you've got Tube, Sanctum, Us, Shelter, and then Dieselworks. These are just like a small, there's so many clubs, it's flipping insane. But if you look at these, they're all very simple logos and they're easily image recognizable. We get confused with Aphex Twin and uh, Half-Life all the time, which is sick. Um, but yeah, uh, the shelter logo actually is made from a, uh, we were looking at different logos and we made it in VR. We are in um, that graffiti program, uh, the graffiti VR program, I forget the name. But we were just like looking at different logos and spray painting things and we saw this uh, thing for like a storm shelter. And we were like, what if we just extended that and put a dot? And uh, you should have seen some of the terrible, terrible revisions of the shelter logo before that. And we just kept coming back to that one and we were like, yeah. So VR can also be a great tool for sketching stuff out. Like think about like what you want to do and how you want to portray yourself. The easiest way, as you can see, is like tube and sanctum. It's literally the word. And sanctum, I think it's just a font, like slightly modified. Like it's cool, be simple, it's fine. Uh, the more complex and noisy you make things, the harder it is for people to understand them. Um, back in 2010, when the, like Electro House and Dubstep was a big thing, there was a lot of like metalcore type logos and things like that, at least in DJing. That, that's cool, um, but it has to fit your brand. And I won't tell anyone how to like run their brand, but like if you make it simple and easily recognizable, it's a lot easier for people to like latch on to it and kind of do it themselves. Like the shelter logo, you can draw, it's like duh, duh, duh. And uh, we wanted it, we made it so people could tag it um, in random places, which they have. Um, I think someone posted something where they tagged it in like a UK train station, like in giant spray paint. So I'm expecting at one point like some police person to show up at my door and be like, what is this? Um, but yeah, a good way to look at this is like, how do, what people what people do you like and look up to and like and are inspired by how do they brand themselves obviously don't copy them but like look at look at some of your favorite artists like look at porter look at all these people and like kind of see how they're branding themselves and doing their visual stuff and kind of take don't rip them off or like emulate them but like kind of look at what they do and how they do it 
and just kind of emulate it, you know, but put your own spin on it. Uh, it's okay. That's how I learned how to make music too. I literally drug other people's songs that I liked and just tried to make it. And then eventually I got better and better and you, I started seeing the patterns and, you know, I A-B'd. Like, you can do the same thing with visuals. It's how you get better. Um, there's a reason things are popular. There are reason things, like, connect with people. We have, we have, our brains are wired for it. Take advantage of that. Um, in, a, in a positive way. Um, graphic design does matter. It does. Like, create a mood board. Figure out how your music or brand feels. Um, you, like, you don't want, you don't want, like, a, a metalcore twig logo f if you're making, like, cutesy anime future base. It just doesn't make sense, right? It doesn't make sense. I mean, you can. There's some people, like, Creepy does it really well, um, but they still got that element of, like, super happy, like, in there, right? So you kind of want to convey that. Um, if you're creating it yourself, know your limitations. Uh, make sure you have a clear vision in mind, you know? Like, it's okay. I suck at graphic design. I can make the concepts, uh, but you know, I, I, for, for a lot of stuff for Shelter, I'll literally just make it because I can't afford to spend more money. Um, but uh, my most recommended is commissioning a designer. Like, it, it ranges from like a hundred bucks to a thousand bucks. Sometimes if they're your friend, they'll charge you less, or you could do like, a big, a big thing to do is uh, kind of trading. So, if you can't afford things, because, you know, life, life's rough, you know, sometimes, but if you can't afford things, like, talk to, make friends with the artist and be like, yo, I'm a creator. Do you need music for a video? Do you need, is there any way I can do an equivalent of how much work this will be for you? And we can just kind of trade. That's a good way to look at it, too. Um, a good way to find designers for me is, uh, I find a lot of them on Twitter. There's a lot of young, super cool designers. And if you find one, just check their following and you'll find more. They, they always hang out together. Um, the person who does most of the stuff for our stuff is Ash. His, their name is Niney. They go by Niney. They make sick music and visuals. Um, but I found them because I kept seeing their art on Twitter and I was like, I just reached out to them, and now they're part of the team, and it's sick. Um, but don't be afraid to talk to them. Don't be weird, but like, just be like, hey, I really love what you do, um, and start showing them your music. Show them what you're doing, and be like, hey, this is what I do. I'd love to work with you or commission you. And be real. Like, uh, most designers, if they're not, they're not dicks, they'll, they'll understand. They're not gonna be like, oh, let me charge this kid $1,000. Like, be reasonable with your budget. Don't, don't offer like $10, $5, but you know, be reasonable. Like, people, people are people, and like, if they like what you do and you're showing them and they're invested in it, they'll probably lower the price just because they wanna work with you. And everything's like a partnership, right? So everything you do, it benefits you, it benefits the artist that you're working with, um, so kind of look like it like a partnership and always credit them if you credit them They're more willing to work with you and they'll probably hook you up with prices So like every time we work with a designer or someone does a poster I credit them because I want to help them build their portfolio That's that's a really good way to like also work with with artists So yeah develop a visual identity for what it is you want to do um, create graphical assets to promote your event if you have nothing to show people, they, they won't show up, they won't be invested, right? And like, make posters. They go a long way and gather a lot of effort, but they can create an entire mood for your event. Like, a, a lot of our posters, um, I just kind of, we have like a lot of different, some of them are done by like different artists. Uh, they're all young, like, super young, like creatives all across the country. And I just, I don't tell them anything, I just give them a lineup and I'm like, pop off. That's a good thing to know with like, especially posters, just kind of give them the, give them the lineup and then kind of link them some of the music of people that are playing and just be like, pop off. Trust me. If you just let artists do their job, like graphic artists, they know what they're doing. If you just tell them like basic notes of like, this is kind of what I fe I'm feeling, but do what you feel this will look like, you're gonna get a better result, um, in my opinion. 
unless you're super picky, which is okay to be. Some people are like, no, this has to be this size and this typeface. And, but honestly, for me, just letting them pop off is the way to go. And these are just some of the posters that we've had. I love the posters. Like at one point, I'm going to print them out and I'll frame them all because they're all like little mini pieces of art. Um, and we kind of just, in the Patreon, I give everyone the high quality files. And I w at some point, I want to get it where I can like print them and send them to the artists that play because it's just cool to have. Um, a big thing is getting involved in the community. Your personal like creative outlet at least will do better if you're involved in the community. This means going to see other people. If you don't go see other people and you're just at your own thing and in your own world, people will not come see you. It's a two-way street. Um, you won't win alone. You just don't. You can't do everything yourself. You're, you, there's a few, very few people that get to be a savant, but then a lot of the times you'll start realizing, oh, there's a bunch of crazy creatives behind that person. Uh, perfect example, Porter Robinson. He finds so many young creatives to do all his visuals and all his music videos and everything. Um, he doesn't do it all himself. Um, good way, places to find community, music, VR chat, party hub on Twitter. It's run by a guy named Duck. If you want to get involved in VR, the VR chat music scene, or you, like, you want to start going to shows and meeting people, that is the place to look. That dude, I don't know how he does it. He lists every event every day. He rarely misses. It's crazy. Uh, recently, there was a VR chat like New Year's World with a bunch of posters in diverse communities. It's still up. You can go there, and there's like advertisements for so many communities there as well, not just music. That place is a good place to find creators too, like world creators or asset makers. So if you're looking for that, that's a good resource that's up right now. Uh, if you're looking for the dance community, which there is a huge dance community in there, and it is sick. Uh, VR Dance Academy is one of the ones that I've seen. Uh, VR Chat Discord is a good place to look, even though sometimes it can be a, a fun show. Uh, <laughs> our shelter Discord not to plug us too much, but we do have a community events channel. We have community music there. So if you make music or events, join our Discord and put it in the channel. I listen to most of the music that comes through there. And uh, it, once you get involved in one Discord, it's like a rabbit hole. You'll, you'll just keep going. And, and it may not be like the first one you join may not be for you. Everyone has different tastes. Uh, so just join one and don't, and don't ever feel bad about leaving a Discord. If you're just like, yo, this is clogging up my stuff, just leave. But eventually you'll find where you li like comfortable and want to be. And uh, meeting people is meeting people, right? Talk, be patient and friendly, and chances are you'll find people, you'll find places you least expected, right? Also, like public lobbies. Be nice to people in public lobbies. I found Kai in a public lobby. If I didn't go to a public lobby and talk to somebody, shelter wouldn't exist. So like honestly, and it's cool because you get to save someone sometimes when they're like two days into VR and they're like, I just have been around kids in Quest screaming at me and memeing. <laughs> like save them, please. Show them VR is cool. Uh, hopefully groups will, will help that too. Um, <laughs> work with others, learn together, grow together, right? Uh, we've collaborated with so many people. We've collaborated uh, collaborated with Trekkie Tracks, uh, Resumu, which is another dance club. We've collaborated with Ghost Club like three times, which is is really interesting because every time it, uh, there's like a few people that speak okay English, and like it's so funny. There's always a language barrier. They just kind of let us. We're like, you want to work? And it's just like, yes, okay, cool. And I just sent them the date and time. But working with people is great. Uh, we recently did a New Year's event with Dieselworks, and that was amazing. Um, yeah, I've worked, and we've worked with uh, Never Say Die before they died, and then um, Disciple for Virtual Riot, uh, and that was cool. They just emailed us, and they were like, "Hey, we want to do this," and I was like, "Okay, come in VR, and we're going to talk in VR, and like make sure you're into this beforehand." But working with other people is great. Don't do it alone. Collaborate. If you're if you start doing an event or you start moving as an artist. Reach out to other artists and work with them. Obviously, don't like think you're going to collaborate with Skrillex in like a week if you're making music or doing something like that. But 
look for artists that are kind of on the same level as you and work with those. Because honestly, it's cooler when you're kind of on the same level because it doesn't feel like you're just trying to like level up, you know? Um, and it can be fun and you'll learn. You'll always learn by working with other people because nobody works, two people work the same. Um, and then remember, it's a lot, you know? Breathe, breathe in and breathe out. Everything's okay. Do it at all at your own pace. It's, it's a lot. You don't have to do it in like a week. Don't speed run. Take your time. Take your time. It's like making music. It, it takes like two to three years to make good stuff most of the time, you know? Everything just takes time. So just breathe in, breathe out, stay calm. And create stuff. If you're a producer DJ, put out music. If you're, if you're more of just a DJ, start, like, start making DJ tools. I know production sucks, it's really hard. Um, but, and releasing regular mixes or a radio show, or do like a Twitch show, or do, just do stuff regularly. If you're a VJ, showcase reels or make VJ packs. Actor, comedian, release your work, have a Twitch stream that you regularly do. Um, world builder, put out worlds and like make video, like little videos, teasers on them, you know? Let people use them and like, be like, hey, you can use my world, put my thing on there, right? Um, and the advantage of a lot of the VR and digital creator stuff is while you're doing it in VR, you can use OBS or the VR and the VR chat camera to just record yourself. Just record it and then just throw it in, throw it in a video editing software. Probably not Adobe Premiere because I want to kill Adobe Premiere sometimes. But uh, yeah, throw it in editing software and edit little clips for social media and like start building, you know? TikTok's good, uh, really good for VR creators. I hate it, I've, I'm terrible at it. I think it, I missed the generational boat for it, but it's great. Like, it, if you do well on TikTok, you will start having people show up to your shows and listen to your music. Like, most people in the music industry, they literally pay TikTok dancers thousands of dollars to just plug their songs. It's insane. Uh, Instagram reels are another way to promote your world, but don't focus on numbers. And don't put too much effort into them. Like, constantly be creating stuff, but like, put it out there, interact with the positive comments you get, and then close that shit. Don't look at the numbers, don't be like, oh man, this only got like five likes. That's five people that were like, this is cool, you know? I think back, there's a really good thing called, uh, Trent Reznor did a thing that was a hundred, or a thousand true fans. If you have a thousand true fans that really fuck with what you're doing and love you, that's all you need to survive. And those thousand people will tell other people and it, it'll grow from there, but you need to focus on the core people that you like. And don't think of them like fans, think of them like friends. Everyone I know in like fellow artists or people in VR, they all make stuff and they're all super creative. And I love, I love learning about what they do. It, it goes back to like working with others and just like supporting other people because everyone is a little bit creative in some way, right? Share your creations with the world, with the world. Create social media presence. It sucks. I fucking hate social media most of the time, but it, 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 you have to do it. Um, decide how personal you want to make it. You can make it just like, I just share my art. Um, or you can be like, I shit post and make funny things, right? A lot of dubstep guys do that. They just like, it, they're like half comedian. It's crazy. But D depending on your vision, fine-tune it, right? It's, it's you putting your stuff out into the world, um, and you can separate it. Example, Shelter has multiple social media accounts. We have one for the label, which is pretty much just music, and then we have one for Shelter, where I repost like everything that has a Shelter logo on it, and events, and other people's events. Uh, and fine-tune it to what you're, you think your audience would enjoy, right? Um, because you're gonna, you gotta think about it like, eventually you're, you're trying to, it, it's a delivery system for people that are fans of you and want to consume what you're doing. So just think about the content that you're putting out, right? If it doesn't feel right or it, like you're not, you don't like it, just don't post it, you know? Post stuff you care about and like you wanna share, right? And, and think about your audience as friends. Learn about them and support is a two-way street. I always say that. Um, be authentic. Don't force yourself to do things you don't want to do. I hate TikTok. I'm not, you're not going to see me doing like Fortnite dances on TikTok to my music or like making 
comedian skits to promote my songs. I just don't like it, and that's okay. Um, understand that you have to work hard, and you know, like it, it, attention's not promised for just doing something. Like I don't make a song and expect people to listen to it. It's it's sick when people do, and it does kind of eat at you a little bit, but you get better over time of just being like, okay, on to the next thing, right? And do it for the love, the rest will follow, right? I didn't make Shelter with Kai and all these people to like get big or, or, or like sell out or try to like sell it or try to like make money. I did it because I love it and I love, I, I found a way to support other artists that are smaller like myself who don't get opportunities, right? And that, that was the whole focus, was like creating a space where people can have a platform to share what they love to do, and, I, and we could have that, right? Showcasing your work and achievements is important, but do not make it the focus, right? We've been featured in so many publications, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's a lot. And I, it's kind of a meme at this point. People are like, oh, shelter again? Uh, and I'm like, yeah, uh, okay. But, you know, I repost it once, I say, this is great. This is cool, and I move on, right? I'm not like, don't milk it too much, because it's really cool to celebrate successes, but I prefer to focus on like the work and what's ahead than like things that happened in the present. Like I celebrate them in the present, I go, that was cool, onto this thing, right? There's plenty of formulas, you don't have to follow them, you can create your own. Um, but yeah. Making it an experience. How do you make it an experience, right? So you've made things, you're starting to move, you're building a community. How do you make it a, an experience? The people. Focus on the people in the community. They will, drive, they will drive and give you ideas. Sometimes they'll literally tell you what you want and you can kind of craft a vision for them. Like in Shelter, there's been memes that literally just like cause real things to happen. So we did a Shelter Con and there was this meme where people, I, I hate Among Us, I hate it so much. But there was a meme where people like just kept posting Among Us, which people do. And then they made a shelter version of the logo called Shelter Among Us. And then at ShelterCon we were like, okay, let's order an Among Us suit and I make Iron DJ for free songs in the Among Us suit and draw shelter logos all over it. It'll be like Shelter Shelt Among Us showed up. And I, I hate Shelter, I hate Among Us. But I, I was like, you know what? Like, the community lo would love this and this is for them, right? But it's like kind of paying attention and helping people craft the narrative, but still like maintaining your creative control, right? Um, it's, it's like making your community a place where anyone can be part of it, anyone can create or change the narrative, but it still follows your vision and your lore and your what you want to do. But again, it comes back to like, it's so much better when you have people around you and they feel part of it. Um, at least with Shelter, it feels like we, it's more for the people and controlled by the people than us. We just do all the work to like create this space where people can express themselves. Um, at least that's how I try to have it. Um, expand beyond your comfort zone. Um, I've sacrificed a lot of financial stability to focus on shelter. And that, that, that's my personal choice. I don't say everyone do that. Um, but like, we, we hosted a, we've hosted a couple of events and Rod over here, uh, Elevative, has come with us and saved our ass a bunch of times. But I, I, I've run club nights before in the past, but I've never like been like, okay, let me ship like all my computers across country and we're gonna work with these people that like don't know what they're doing and <laughs> basically get the, get the venue together, right? Like ShelterCon, we swapped the speakers three times because they showed up. We didn't have speakers five minutes before doors. And it's, uh, it's just like, it's gonna be okay. Kind of when you're uncomfortable, you're in a learning situation and it's good to be uncomfortable. Uh, so like expand past your comfort zone, especially once you start getting comfortable and making what it is what you want to make, right? And um, start small. We've been blessed with some like insane huge opportunities, but it started with someone telling me pepperonis aren't real and it was like a space just for me, right? Start with small virtual events with a small overhead and build a community that you love and cherish and expand from there, right? And it's okay if you stay small. 
Like, I've, I've been doing this 16 years, and I think I've had the best opportunities and been the happiest recently after I found this. I've, I, I've played four Insomniac festivals, and I would take my current state of VR events over that any single day of the week. Um, Cause like it looks it looks nice, but it's it ain't it, Chief. I I I, mu I much prefer having an audience and f and like community that I interact with and I know them and they know me. Um, when you're just EDM DJ doing festival and sonic stuff, it's super cool. Like the stages are cool to perform on, but there's a disconnect. You're just up there and half the crowd is kind of on drugs or drunk, and you're just like. Okay, yeah, these people are gonna, not going to remember me tomorrow. Um, but yeah, make your own universe. We shelter, we do, we do live events, we've started doing merch. I've started making like VR, with Neophoric, we started making like VR products. Like, we did a VR hoodie, and people are like, why are you making a VR hoodie? I get so hot in VR, and I'm like, well, you know, it's got functionality that's compatible with VR, but it also fits an entire six-pack six in the armpit vents, which we found out. <laughs> um, but yeah, like, you don't have to just do music. We, we started a record label and all this stuff, and I, I, again, we did not set out to do this. This wasn't in the game plan, but it just kind of organically growed. But like, expand. If you're making music, how can ever, there's so many people making music, how can you make it more than just you putting out music or you putting an event together? How can you make it like a universe? And obviously don't like go super crazy, but like little physical objects go a long way. Like at the end, those things on the table are free. Those are Patreon rewards that I mail from my house. It's, it's a nightmare. I mail like 150 to 200 items from my house like every month. Um, but it matters because then people have a little piece of shelter with them and they get something for supporting us and it's kind of like it expands. There's like little little merch pieces, there's little virtual items and we kind of have our own little universe. And like our logo is open source, like all our shirts are open source. Like you. If you message me, I'll just send you the shirt. Uh, a lot of it's behind Patreon just because it's there. But if you message me and you're like, yo, I can't afford this. I'm like, okay, here's the link. But And if you can't afford a shirt, print one. Draw a shelter, draw your own shelter shirt. Some of my favorite merch is just p shit people have printed or drawn on themselves. Like, you don't have to buy our stuff, right? The, the logo is as much yours as it is ours. So that's a big thing too, is like, don't think about like, I gotta over monetize everything. You don't. Um, the monetization that happens naturally is much better. Cause the world sucks, you need money, but it's okay. I did have a video from Sheltercom, but we, uh, the internet's been spotty, but you can go on YouTube. There's two recap videos and the last one for San Diego was actually created by a kid in VR, uh, Langa, Langa Fiam. Um, they, so they're just a random kid that started recording video in, in VR and they just hit me up and were like, yo, can I do this ShelterCon recap video? And I was like, okay, sure. And they just sent me a bunch of VR videos and they were sick. And they came and they made the most insane video I've ever seen, like recap video. I had like big DJs hitting me up like, yo, who is this? <laughs> who is this? How do I get in contact? And then uh, a week ago I played a show with with Porter and uh, Sound Hollow, and I just, we, we got him a media pass and he just like went off. It was crazy, he just was like, I'm gonna wait till they tell me no. He was on stage behind like Porter and said, this guy just like filming. Um, and that kid started from VR, and I'm pretty sure he's, <laughs> like once, once they see that video, he's gonna start being, like doing stuff for big DJs, and started in VR, right? So you never know where the journey's gonna go, it's a journey. It's kind of fun. Creating stuff's cool, especially when you start going out and doing things. You'll get into some crazy, wacky situations. I have, I have more stories than fingers. Um, yeah, here's the video. It doesn't work. Um, remember to have fun. There's Sheltmongus. Creation is meant to be fun. It's hard work, but it should also fulfill your own personal goals and vision. If it doesn't feel like fun all the time, maybe take a step back and like, think about, like, why do I do this? You only get so many days on this earth, 
everyone here is going to expire one day. That sucks, but it's the truth. So how can you like put stuff out into the world and have fun? Because uh, life's too short to be like working yourself to the death all the time. Uh, and it will be hard work. I, I've definitely screamed a few times. Uh, and it, it gets difficult, but it, the positive outweighs the negative for me. So it just focus, try to have fun. I'm bad at this one sometimes. Um, but yeah. And then I, I, I do have time. I wanted to leave time for questions. Oh, cool. We got 20 minutes. I talked a lot. Jesus. Um, yeah, but if you have questions, you can come up to the mic and uh, ask questions. I'll try to answer them as best as I can. But yeah, if you have any questions, this is the time. And thank you. Thank you for listening to me. I know I ramble a lot. Yeah. Hey, great, great panel. Thanks for all the advice. Um, this is more of a DJing related question. Yeah, yeah. Specifically a virtual reality question. Um, I mix on an XZ, which is like, you know, the four channel, like one step short of CDJs kind of mixer. What do you feel is like the advantage of CDJs over that one all in one kind of setup? Um, the nice thing about CDJs, right, and why so many professionals use them is there's one track per unit. So it's separated per unit. So I have more control, right? We have a lot of the controllers and XDJs and software based ones. There's a, there's a few m more steps to getting to where you want to go, right? Like, they're getting better, but just having individual control on each track is super huge for me. Um, that's a lot of the reason, like, I like the Pioneer stuff more than, uh, like, because uh, Denon's been doing stuff and they're like, oh, you can put two tracks on one CDJ. And I'm like, that's cool, but, like, I'm going to fuck that up if I'm, like, in the middle of a performance and I have to switch between two things. So CDJs, it's just more control and more precision. Like, you can adjust on, on, on the CDJs, you can kind of adjust the heaviness of the jog wheel, and it's just the feel or muscle memory of them. I like CDJs because I learned on them, and I played desert parties. I used to play on, like, my first CDJs were CDJ 200s, and it was all CD-based with no, no sync, no beat grid, no nothing. Um, but I, it's not a necessary thing, but like once you try CDJs, you'll be like, oh, they, they just make them easier. They're easier to use, and that's why they're more expensive, because they're just easier to use. Yeah. Like once you, once you get used to them, you're like, oh. So if you ever are at a party and there's CDJs, like prep a record box USB and just be like, yo, can I hop on and try these? Like you'll, you can DJ on CDJs in like two seconds. We, uh, at ShelterCon, we did open decks and there was kids that have never touched CDJs in their life and they played like fire sets. So they, they're, they're kind of like a cheat code. They make you sound better. Like so, most of the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, uh, great presentation. Uh, you were talking about this collaboration that you can do like between DJs and artists where you know, do something for you, do something for me, like trading. Um, I'm not a DJ or an artist, but I am a programmer. So what types of trades could I do like in this VR chat world? In VR chat, like if you're a programmer, like, so VR chat uses primarily like Udon, which is like kind of like, what, it, it's a pain in the ass. But like, if you can learn U sharp, like, U sharp, there's not too many people that are like hardcore U sharp programmers. And if you have a programmer brain, it's just another language. So in VR chat, like learning U sharp, which is primarily what they use, um, I forget what language it's like based on. C sharp. C sharp, yeah. So it's close to C sharp. So if you're like yeah, familiar yeah. with that, yeah. it uses U sharp, Udon, right? So uh -huh. if, if you start learning Udon, you could probably do trades where it's like, hey, like, I want to learn Udon, and you could, you could get commissions to do Udon programming for people, or... What, like, what are the, these things that I could do? You could do, you could ask for, what, you could make a world for your own programming, to advertise your programming, or just if you want to hang out, like you want your own chill world, you want your own home world, there's people who definitely make you a home world if you're a sick U-sharp programmer. So... Yeah. Yeah. Like there's, there's tons of yeah. Okay. So I guess what you said is, I need some world being built. I can do programming. What is it that you need? And then. The yeah, yeah. You okay. kind of talk to okay. them and like, 
yeah, yeah. You know, work with people, but like the program programmers are in high demand in there. There's not too many. Mo most people are like more creators. They like just making things in Unity, but we need more programmers. Like we need we need more programmers. Like okay. so, if you got in there and you're like, yeah. yo, I want to learn U Sharp, and you just run with it, and you got a programmer brain, you'll be in like quick demand, and you could if you want your own. If you want to trade or you want to start doing commissions, you could start making actual money like doing udon oh, wow. programming okay. for people. So yeah, great. It Thank is you. in demand. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I'm not like not too good with the program. Stuff, that was but a great answer. Thank yeah, you. yeah, yeah. Uh, hello, I'm I'm new to all this, so my question is: Do you see? And I'm, I'm not sure if there are experiences like this. Do you see VR experiences kind of going the way of what we're seeing? What we saw in like Fortnite with Travis Scott and I think it was the Ariana Grande concert within Fortnite. Yeah, yeah. Do you see uh, things going in that r route in terms of like visual experiences? Yeah, I mean, it's going to get there. Like, VR is a little bit more limited, right? Um, but you also get more interaction. Like, there's full body tracking, and it feels like people are present there. I went to the marshmallow one, I think, and the slushy one, because uh, my buddy's like on the marshmallow visual team, and he was like, you got to see this. Um, I think those are cool, and I know Facebook's doing a lot with Meta, and um, I, I think it's cool to see more virtual concepts because it's more accessible for people. Because what you gotta think about it, right, is a lot of those things aren't made for people who have access to big concerts or things like that. It's made for general people that maybe live in like Idaho and like Travis Scott, and they <laughs> never get to see a Travis Scott concert, but now they can see it, right? Mm -hmm. I do see things getting bigger, like scale. Like, I mean, they already are in VR. There's uh, San Rios do, do, does like a huge festival in there now with like Miku's played there and Kazuna AI and all those things. So it already is there in VR, but I think there's, I think with the big, there's always the small, right? And that's the beautiful thing about uh, virtual concerts, at least in VR chat, is the, the San Rio thing with all those huge names can be just as big as like a, a club that somebody threw themselves. Um, the only problem with, I see with like the bigger concerts with Travis Scott and things like that is when there's no option for the little guy to make their own experience. And that's what I appreciate so much about like VR chat is like it's an even playing field. Like uh, Travis Scott can just come in and buy it. Like you know, it it just it doesn't work like that. So I do see it happening, but I just want to. I feel like we need to make sure there still is like almost like that open source feel where it's like anyone can do it. And just because you have money and fame, it doesn't mean you're going to be there. But it is cool that more stuff like that's happening because it's. You need money to excel the field, right? Yeah. Like the marshmallow Travis Scott things need to exist for money to come into it, and it's just going to help everything in the long run. But yeah, I I, I think you're going to see that balance of both, right? And I, I I have noticed that those concerts don't do that. The Fortnite ones do well, um, and they're good for the artists. I think Marshmallow's streams went up 680 percent after doing the Fortnite thing, which is a smart move. If you ever get the chance to play in Fortnite, do it. I know it's corny, but do it. It's the best thing you ever do for your music career. Um, but yeah, it's the same thing with TikTok, right? It's just kind of like figuring out like how you want to like navigate and how you want to present your brand. Obviously, if you make like an underground artist making breakcore, you don't want to do a Travis Scott concert in, in Fortnite, but yeah, or maybe you do. Uh, but yeah, I, hopefully that answered your question. I know I went on a tangent, but okay. yeah, I appreciate it. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Um, first off, thanks for doing this. Seriously, really cool insights, and I appreciate you just sharing your experience here. Um, yeah. So I started building like live shows and experiences and stuff like in Neos, yeah. largely because you can do it in VR. And you know you can literally just publish a world, and it's instantly people can show up. You don't have to go through like the community labs and all that stuff. Um, but all that to say, it was Neos was attractive to me because people could just pop in, and, and they would just come in and like help me build stuff. And I learned how to world build like through having those collaborative experiences. Um, I want to shift to VR chat, but don't really know how to get started because there isn't really that 
collaborative element. And I know you said you're not much of a world builder, but I'm just curious if you have any avenues for like, hey, I want to get started world building and would love to find a community to yeah. help me do this. Join our, uh, I, this isn't a plug, but like join our Discord. There's a channel called Mermaid Tavern that we have in there. Okay. And it's dedicated for people to just create VR stuff. So people who are in there that make worlds and stuff, literally come in there and just start asking questions. And like people will probably link you to other discords or like get you involved. That's probably like the easiest way I can say like A to B. Like come in Mermaid Tavern, just start asking questions. We our community luckily is super friendly and helpful, and I'm so grateful for it because like people will come in all the time and have just like you know like what normal places you go and they'd be like. Why are you asking this dumb question? Here they're like so nice. Like someone joined and was just like, I want to start DJing in VR. And someone was like, join voice chat right now. And then they just showed them That's how amazing. to do everything, right? So I think for that, it's like join our, join our Discord and kind of get in the Mermaid Tavern and start talking to people. And like eventually you'll probably find someone will be like, yo, join this Discord. It's just for like world building and stuff. And then just kind of rabbit hole it from there. Okay. Um, there is the VR chat Discord, but sometimes that can be a mess. Um, so it's usually better to get in the smaller community ones because it's easier to kind of like rabbit hole and yeah. get out there. Um, what's up? Of crazy people who are there, like all these new things. So they're more happy to help new people come along. Yeah, what's the, what's the name of the one that Fiona runs to? Prefabs. Mm. Oh, is it closed? Okay. Sorry. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, there's a community meetup that happens every Sunday. Uh, if okay. you join our Discord, there's people that go to that. There's a community meetup for world building on uh, every Sunday in VR chat. If you join our Discord and you're like, hey, who's go like, who knows how to get to the community meetup? Um, that's a good way too. The community meetups okay. that happen Sunday, because you could just join VR and start talking to people, and then they'll be like, I run this Discord that like is all for creators, and just do it. Okay. And I'm, yeah. I'm can I ask a quick follow up? Yeah. I think another reason I've hesitated is because I've heard like horror stories from people about like, oh, I've been stuck in community labs forever. Like, yeah. I don't know how do I get support to get out of that. Yeah. So, I mean, is it really that difficult? Like, if I go and build a world, am I gonna? You know? If it's not, if you join one of those like community creator things, you'll probably get enough like friends from that where you can just be like, hey, come join my world. I'm gonna like make it an event. Make don't just like make a world and post it and be like, oh, I hope people show up. Literally get involved in the community and just ask them, be like, hey, I want to debut my thing or do the community meetup where everyone comes and then enough people will come and it'll get published, right? Yeah, so think about okay. making worlds like doing an event, you know, like you've got to get people to show up and like make it, you worked hard on it, show it off, flex it, you know, the, the, do it and don't, no shame. like. People do it all the time, and it's just ask. True. What's the worst someone's gonna say? No, <laughs> you know, I'm 99% of the time I'm not gonna say no. Everyone's super friendly in those things. So awesome, thank you. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Look right, right here. Live, live community. Uh, hey, uh, thanks for doing this. This is really awesome. Yeah. Um, so I created a world called Neo Xeno uh, a while back and I kind of based it off of my experience at EDC like a few years ago. Um, and I was trying to get like a community built up around that, but I kept running into this kind of like bottleneck issue where drunk VR users would want to come in and play like pool, but not listen to the music. And then people who would want to listen to the music would only show up to listen to music and then like not stay and like they just kind of like leave after like one set. How do you kind of like balance that? Like how would, like, I guess the question is more around like curation for like an audience. Like how would you go about like trying to build a collective community around that sort of thing? Do stuff that will probably piss people off. Like, <laughs> like, it's okay, it's not like in a bad way, but like make it where like they kind it kind of forces people, like what we did at Shelter, we made it like small and we mute the voices on the, we have a voice dampening on the dance floor. It pisses some people off, 
right? It really does. But like, it's important because it forces people to pay attention to the music, mm -hmm. and they have to go in and fiddle with their sound to get it to where they can like normally hear people. And it's annoying, right? But the generic person who comes in and doesn't do that, like, they will, they will just like put up with it because it's like too much effort. Mm -hmm. So it's it's like curating. If you have like a if your world's about music and things like that, take out like things like the pool table. Make it about music. Mm. Make it about music and be like, you're going to enjoy this. And like, also make a, your event shorter and more like curated because super long events, the, the, I feel like the attention span is like four hours. Uh, I know our thing is our shelter, we do five, but I just play at the end for whoever wants to stick around. And then I, the focus is the guests. The first four hours is the guests where the attention is. Mm -hmm. So like make it shorter and take out things that could be a distraction, especially if the focus is gonna be the music. Also like work with, vis like there's so many cool VJs and visual artists. Start bringing in guest VJs and visual artists and like make it an experience. Uh, like it's cool to see like looping logos like and that can be cool but like if once you get like a visual artist and it's like it feels more like a show people are gonna be like oh crap this is this is like oh i feel like i'm at a club i feel like i'm at a festival right mm -hmm. so shorten things focus in on them take out the distractions and don't f be don't worry about making people feel un uncomfortable in a non like aggressive way okay if that makes sense yeah 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 so yeah, that, that's what I would do, okay, cool. 100 percent, and that's what we do. I think yeah, this might be the last one. Maybe I don't know. We might have time for one or two. So uh, hello, I'm an anthropologist working with uh, virtual reality communities, and I was uh, curious, like, if you had any recommendations for finding community members who would uh, like to represent uh, VR chat um, for like interviews and um, follow along, just to observe and participate in their, like their daily routines. Yeah, I mean, if you, again, our server, if you join or you talk to some of the people here, um, they're more than happy to talk. Like, if you join our server, I know I keep saying that, but like we try to keep it friendly and open. And if you just ask people, hey, I'm starting to do this, like I'm looking for people who would be willing to do interviews, there's so many people who want to share their story. And um, I'd prefer like more people like one thing I would say is like focus on smaller guys because like the bigger guys like us and like myself and like some of the bigger clubs and, and communities in VR, they get a lot of shine. And some of the smaller creators are like just as important. They just are a little less vocal. So it's really good to like just talk to people and feel it out. But yeah, I would say in our Discord or if you talk to some people here, like. Rod just gave someone else a community <laughs> meetup thing. So it's just like, join some of the smaller communities, and join them and just talk to people. And don't for, and ask, like I said, the worst thing someone can say is no. So. Yeah, great, 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 as usual then, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly, 100%. Cool, yeah. thank you. Thank you. Yeah, 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 MacFest also is getting pretty VR chat heavy and VR heavy, which is cool. I think, yeah, I think it'll be the last question. Okay, so quick question. Uh, does it matter if you're going to VR chat with a, like a full body suit versus just like through your PC? No, if no. you join on desktop, at least for me, I don't, I love desktop tell people because it, it's expensive. It's super expensive. So like, it's okay, join on desktop and try it out. And I, I bet you, you'll get hooked just talking to people on desktop that you'll like want to buy VR and then you'll, go down the rabbit hole of spending like insane amounts on like 13 point track or however many point tracking it is now. Um, but yeah, like just common desktop. Like if, if someone gives you crap for being on desktop, just don't talk to that person because it, it, it's like, it doesn't matter. Like everyone starts somewhere. It's like if I was like, oh, you use a, you use a DJ control, I'm not talking to you. Like, it's like, no, just come in talk and like hang out and eventually you'll get hooked you will and you'll start like you'll want to go down the vr route but yeah it's totally fine to join on desktop and talk to people people do it all the time so yeah thank you yeah yeah no problem
All right, well, I think I'll be respectful of the next panel. So thank you all, I appreciate it. Hopefully this wasn't too boring. Um, but yeah, thanks, and uh, have a good day.